Hey everyone, Andang here for another episode of the Epic Story. When we last left off, we finally made it into the final book that is currently released on the Epic Story. This has been like five years in the making. And now, as wolves run by, it's time to go and talk with this guy. It is good to see you again, Staff Deng. Damrod sent you. There is indeed much to do before we can be sure the path to the Moranin, the Black Gate of Mordor is clear and free of threat. We would be grateful for your help in this task. Our numbers are small, and I consider you as much of a ranger as myself. Well, I do have your guy's cloak, and speaking of cloaks, I did get a new one along with this gear that I've been gaining over time, and decided to go ahead and change to it. So, let me know in the comments down below what you think, but I think it looks pretty awesome. Got the just all red outfit. I've never had an outfit like this before in Lotro, so pretty cool. Dervin and Pippin are staring out at the road ahead. Alright, buddy. This road will take us to the very gate of Mordor. This road will take us across the blasted plains of Dagalad, to the very gate of Mordor. The men stir with restlessness, but they will obey their liege. Whether he be Aemir or Aragorn. Others there are too, who have joined this host in cause of allied friendship. If they have not turned back now, I believe they will never abandon us. I have shared words with Peregrine Took here, and he too has a courage about him. This is the road to Mordor. No <laughs> one could mistake it for anything else. It looks as I would have expected it to look. Had I ever wanted to fill my heart with fright and my mind with unease at the considering and... <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Dervin has had some kind words to say concerning my courage, quote-unquote, and I did not want to offend him by disagreeing, but I think he sees what is not there. If I were truly brave, would I feel so frightened at the prospect of taking this road? Certainly not, but Aragorn believes we have to do this. And I have the smarts enough to know he is more wise than I. If he says there is no other way, this hobbit will not gainsay him. This is the road we must take. All right, Pippin. Let's see, we now need to talk to Aragorn at the Host of the West. Are the men ready to march? What did Dervin have to say? Are the men ready to march? You report the ranger's words and Aragorn nods grimly. It pains me that such a course is necessary, but I take satisfaction in knowing the great loyalty and courage of the men with whom I march. Mithrandir calls to you with concern in his voice. Worry gnaws at me, my friend. You were at the Council of the Captains, Staftang, and you heard the arguments for and against this march to the Black Gate. You must know of its importance, as I do. But still, I am troubled. Before battle consumed Minas Tirith, I spoke with Faramir of his watch in Athelion, and he told me that his men encountered two hobbits in the wild, Frodo and Sam. Briefly he held them, but he did not hinder their errand over long, and soon released them to their purpose. But a third there was, and he served our friends as their guide, Gollum. Faramir spoke against the creature, but Frodo believed he could be trusted, and intended to follow him through a secret pass into Mordor. The pass is called Kirithongol. It is an evil place. I know enough of that pass to know that danger lurks there in the darkness, and I fear that Frodo may trust his guide too readily. Alas, that our roads ran apart. A fortnight has passed since Frodo and Sam departed from Faramir's care. My wandering mind worries at how little we know of their fates, and conjures terrible scenarios of what could have befallen. What has happened to our friends? What has happened to the Ring? I don't know, Mithrandir, but I have a feeling we're about to find out. What might have befallen Frodo and Sam since they left Hinnath Anun in the company of Gollum? Alright, and this is a level 80 session play for some random reason, so let's go into it. Up, up, up the stairs, <laughs> Gollum, Gollum, and then 
The tunnel, yes. This way, good hobbits is, yes. <laughs> oh dang, there is Minas Morgul in the distance. Oh man. Can we actually go around to it? Oh man, we can. Look at that. Jeez. Got the whole stair here. It just keeps going down and down. That is awesome. I did not know you could go over here. How do I get back up? There we go. Luckily, Gollum jumps really, really high. Oh, look, I'm over Frodo. Trying to get that ring. Come on. <laughs> Give me the ring, Frodo. Give me the ring. All right, enough silliness. Let's talk to Frodo. Thank you for bringing us this far, Smeagol. I know it cannot have been easy for you to come this way again. Or to creep so near the city below. But you have done right by your promise. Just a little further, you said. I am ready to put these stairs behind us. And then we will need to rest. If we can. I am so very tired. And Sam may not say it, but he must be as well. Come on, Sam. We are nearly at the top. Oh man. Just jumping Gollum in the back. Don't don't worry about me at all, guys. I have had my fill of these stairs, Mr. Frodo. Me too, Sam. Me too. What was it Gollum said was at the top of these stairs? A tunnel, he said. That's right. I don't much care for tunnels. The stairs, the tunnel, and more door. Who would have thought we'd make it there, Mr. Frodo? I think we are almost at the top. I, I can't believe it. At last. Oh, dang. A tower. There is a tower above the pass. I don't like the look of that. At all. Your secret way is guarded after all, Gollum. I suppose you knew that all along, leading us into a trap, are you? He is right, Sam. Every way into Mordor will be watched, in some fashion. Look, we can rest over here, out of the wind. Sam and I need to rest from the climb before we move on to this tunnel you mentioned, Smeagol. I am exhausted. And I do not want to pass beneath that tower without recovering whatever strength we may. You should lie down and get some sleep as well, Smeagol. We will all need our rest for what lies ahead, I imagine. Try and get some sleep, Smeagol. Sleep, precious. <laughs> yes, for a little while. I wonder when we'll find water again. There isn't any up here, so far as I can tell. Do you think there will be any in Mordor? Orcs must drink, surely? They do, but not the sort of drink we would want. Then filling our bottles is even more important. But I have heard not so much as a drip or a trickle. Fair that man. should be enough. Yes, precious. Time to slip away. Faramir said not to drink any water in the Morgul Vale, so it, it doesn't matter. He said not to drink any water flowing out of Imlod Morgul, not into it. Still, I wouldn't trust it. Not unless I was dying of thirst. There's a foul odor about everything. A wicked and stuffy smell. I don't like any of it, but this is the path we must take. That's true, and... And it's doubly true we shouldn't be here right now. Maybe we wouldn't be if we had known the full extent of the thing before we started. I suppose it's always that way, isn't it? In the old stories, I mean. You may be right, Sam. I used to think the folk in those stories went looking for their adventures. As if their lives were a little dull and they needed a bit of sport. But that's not the way of it at all. Not with the stories that really mattered. Folk in those stories were more sort of landed in them. And did not the best they could. It could be that they had a chance to turn back. Or lots of chances, and they didn't. And if they had turned back, well, we wouldn't remember them. 
We don't want to hear that they came back home and everything was all right, and mostly the same. That's not always the best story to hear, though it might be the best one to be landed in. What sort of tale have we landed into, I wonder? I wonder too, but I don't know the answer, Sam. And that's the mark of a real tale, isn't it? Think of any story of which you're particularly fond. You might know how it'll end, or guess that the ending will be happy or sad. But the people inside the story don't know, and you wouldn't want them to know. That's true, Mr. Frodo. I mean, take Baron. Oh man, they're talking about Baron and Luthien? He didn't know he was going to end up with the Silmaril from the Iron Crown, but he did. And that was a much more dangerous adventure than ours, wasn't it? And eventually, the Silmaril came to Arendil. Oh, something just occurred to me. You've got some of its light in the glass that Lady Galadriel gave you. We're in the same tale as Baron. Don't the great stories ever end? Oh, Sam. They don't end as tales, Sam. But the folk in them go when their part is finished. Our part in the tale will end once we've played it, soon or late. And then a good night's rest, and waking up to work in the garden. That's all I'm hoping for, Mr. Frodo. But I wonder if our own tale will ever be put into words, and shared by a fireside. Will folk ever ask to hear it? Will they say, tell us the one about Frodo and the ring? That's one of my favorite stories. Frodo was so brave, wasn't he, Dad? Indeed, my boy. He was one of the most famousest of hobbits. And, as you'll know, that's really something. Oh, Sam. Hearing you talk like that makes me think the tale is already written. But you've forgotten one of the chief characters. Samwise the Stout-Hearted. I want to hear more stories about Sam. Frodo won't have gotten very far without Sam, would he, Dad? Don't make fun, Mr. Frodo. I was being serious. So was I, Sam. So was I. But look around us. This will be no one's favorite part, that's for certain. We should get some rest while we can. That's true, sir. You catch some sleep and I'll stay a watch. Man, I did not realize I missed so much conversation the first time I went through this. That is amazing. I mean, that was a good at least 10 minutes. I mean, that was quite a lot. Very cool. Alright, definitely time to get up now. <laughs> Alright, let's make our way away. And hopefully not be noticed by Sam. He's doing such a good job keeping guard there. Alright. What do you want, precious? Leave me alone. Ah, <laughs> oh, this part's so awesome. Okay, let's talk, buddy. No, precious. Don't go this way. We mustn't hurt nice master. We swore, precious. We swore to serve the nice master. Do not try to hurt him. Must not. Gorm. Gorm. Sneak to the east towards the tunnel. That's our objective with Gollum on the end. Ah, oh, that's so good. All right, continue. Weak. Do not listen to him. Callum, Callum. Smeagol is back, the coward. We shouldn't leave the hobbitses. Gorm, Gorm. They trust us. They do, and we swore on, on the precious. Nice master trusts Smeagol. Yes, he's a friend to us. A good friend. We swore to serve the master of the precious. Once we have the precious, we will be the master. <laughs> Leave us alone, Smeagol. This is the only way. Gollum. Please don't go inside the tunnel. Gollum. Gollum. We can't bring the hobbitses to her. She'll eat them. Yes, not just the fat one, but the master too. And Smeagol can't do that to them. No, precious, no. Don't go to her. She won't want the precious, though. No, indeed. Gollum. Time to go inside the creepy cave. Now what was the right way? Gollum. Gollum. I can't believe he actually gets lost in this place, but I think that that really speaks more towards just how Mordor is set up. 
I still can't get over that his skill is murder. The hobbitses must die, they must die. Gollum, but not yet. Not, no, not yet. Requires breaking the promise and does half a million damage. Well, we're going the right way. Almost there, precious. Almost there. Here we go. This was such a smart idea not to show Shelob. You remember? You remember poor Smeagol, yes? Oh, not so tasty, cool. no, not tasty at all. <laughs> but Smeagol, he brings you tasty foods, yes? They are almost here. <laughs> A gift, yes. A gift for you. <laughs> and then we will be free of our promise. Oh, dang. And the precious will be ours. There is no other way, Smeagol. No other way. All right, there we go. We finished the interlude there. That is just awesome. I love that session play. So In my cool. heart, I guessed that Frodo and Gollum would meet before the end. But I hope that Frodo does not trust blindly. If he remains alert to the possibility of deceit, perhaps he can prevent it before it leads our friends to harm. Or has it already done so? It has been two weeks since they left Hinnith noon. And still there has been no word. If they fell prey to some treachery of golems, surely we would have heard by now. Kirithungul. Grendir's voice trails away as his eyes search the horizon. After a moment, his attention returns, and a smile briefly illuminates his features. I should not have given in to these fears, Stafteng. The ring remains out of Sauron's grasp. Let that boy our hearts and allay some of our worries. For if Frodo were betrayed to Sauron, I feel certain that the Dark Lord would make use of the ring at once, and we would know the end had arrived. That has not happened. The ring and Frodo have not been seized by the Dark Lord. Every step that Frodo takes towards the fire kindles our hopes. My thoughts are also with Frodo and Sam. And I fear for their safety in the company of Gollum. But I agree with Mithrandir that they must still be alive, for we would know if Sauron had the ring. But my reasoning is not that of the wizard. I traveled with Frodo and Sam for almost four months, and we had many adventures and braved many dangers. And even after so many shared hardships, I think Master Gamgee had only just begun to warm up to me, and perhaps did not yet entirely trust this Strider. He will not take his eyes off Gollum, even if Frodo perhaps will. I do not think Gollum will be able to take advantage of our Samwise, even if he thinks he can. They will be fine, in as much as might be whose misfortune is to journey into the Black Land. This is likely to be our last battle. It is our misfortune that we must march to the Black Gate with little hope of our own survival, Stafteng. So many good men have placed their lives in my hands, trusting that this course is important. I believe that it is. But it does not make the burden of that choice any lighter. Some of my kinsmen are deep in thought, contemplating the roads that have led them here while they ready themselves for the road to come. Will you speak with some of them and put into words how grateful I am for all they have done? This is likely to be our last battle, and I want them to know that I appreciate their service, not only as their captain or their king, but also as their friend 
and kinsmen. This may be the last chance to tell them so, and I do not want to miss that opportunity. Alright, well next episode we will learn more about the last chances and hopefully talk to all these men of Gondor and make our way towards the Black Gate. But that is not till next time. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give a like down below and I'll see you again real soon for another episode of The Epic Story. Thank you.